So I'll be talking about the topic for today, thermal set injection molding analysis and material testing. Okay, so let's jump straight into the contents for today. Um, so to start, we'll have a quick overview of the um, thermal set material. And then we'll be talking about all the necessary material properties and how we can do material characterization for all of them. And then after we know the material itself, we, we'll take a look at the uh, thermal set injection molding simulation in our software Moldex 3D. Together with a successful story from one of our users. And finally, we'll come up with a conclusion to some of the day. Okay. So now let's start with a um, quick overview of thermal set. As we all know, uh, plastic polymer are categorized into two main categories, thermoplastics and thermal sets. They are both widely used in the plastic industry in a lot of different applications like the automobile industry, uh, aerospace uh, industry. Uh, medical region, a medical field, and a lot of different fields. So for thermoplastic, uh, uh, commonly we see in a PP, PC, PA, uh, ABS, a lot of them in some uh, polymer blends. For example, PC and ABS. Sometimes we can see uh, PC and ABS in a uh, in our suitcase when we travel. Okay, and and then. We have another category, the thermal set, including uh, polyurethane, uh, PU, silicon, um, liquid silicon rubber, and just rubber, a lot of uh, different um, epoxy, etc. So these are thermal set materials. And the main difference between thermal plastic and thermal set material is for thermal, thermal set, a chemical reaction will take place which will create a crosslink between the polymer chains as you can see uh, on the bottom right so the original mat material the molecular chains they are all separated once the uh, chemical reaction has taken place the there will be crosslink between all the polymer chains that connect them all together. And this cross-linking reaction, uh, also called uh, curing or conversion, all the same, it is a um, irrever irreversible one-time process. So originally at a lower temperature, let's say room temperature, the plastic itself, the polymer, uh, has a lower viscosity uh, it's at a liquid stage but after the material is being heated up the cross-linking the chemical reaction will take place and the polymer will be hardened and enter a solid stage and once it's uh, entered uh, a solid stage uh, it can no longer it cannot return to its original status which is why uh, thermal set material is very difficult to recycle and to be reused for a, a recycled product. So due to this uh, reason, um, a simulation for thermal, thermal set injection molding and, and actually also for other molding type, um, as long as we use thermal set material, uh, simulation becomes a very valuable tool to, to, to save a lot of cost. Okay, but the advantage of thermal set material is that uh, comparing to thermal plastic, it has a much, uh, generally speaking, it has a smaller uh, shrinkage, part shrinkage. So it's actually easier to control the part dimension and with a lower viscosity, um, although flash can is, is often observed um, after injection, but um, it's actually easier to completely fill the cavity with thermal set material sometimes. 
So thermoset material is still widely used in a lot of different fields. For example, IC packaging, um, we often use a thermoset for, for the tire, uh, silicon and O-rings over here, and in a lot of automob automobile part, we use uh, thermoset material like rubber for a uh, ceiling. So thermoset material is widely used uh, nowadays. And with uh, more demand, with higher demand, um, at the same time means higher demand for a proper and accurate and fast simulation tool for such uh, this kind of injection molding process. So in order to finish a simulation for thermal set injection molding, we need to know what are the material properties that will influence our molding process. And with that knowledge, we will be able to use, we'll be able to consider all those properties in a simulation, which is why the next part, we will be talking about the material characterization. First, let's take a look at our own lab uh, in, in our own company, CoreTech. We have a, a laboratory with all these equipments. Um, actually, right now we have uh, uh, even more, but we just list some of them. Uh, for example, the uh, real graph uh, RG25 for viscosity and also the CR6000 for PVT. We have a PVT6000 uh, for thermoplastic and th for thermal set. We have uh, uh, one machine from uh, UCAN that we can test the PVT curve for thermal set material. Uh, we have uh, MCR502 to measure the viscoelastic and also the is also it can also be used for um uh, uh viscosity measurement and dsc we can measure the curing kinetic the instrum we can perform a tensile test for the mechanical property okay so so now let's take a look at the uh, the detail for all the material testing procedures but here i just want to show you that we have all the equipments that makes us capable of running a full material testing for 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 all types of material okay so for the plastic injection stage during the filling stage the curing and viscosity are the two of the most important properties that will influence our filling pattern because higher the curing, the conversion rate is, that means higher the viscosity will be. And with a higher viscosity, uh, it will be more difficult for the, for filling and which and later on it will influence our um, injection pressure or if we're using a transfer molding process then it will influence the transfer pressure so curing and viscosity uh, properties are two of the most important properties during the filling stage so for curing kinetics we have we can use the dsc 8500 with a procedure ASTM um, E1269. We will perform uh, the test under four different heating rate from 10 to uh, 20, 40, and 60 degrees Celsius per minute. And we'll heat up the ma uh, material from uh, 30 degrees to 250 degrees Celsius. So let's go to the next page first to look what exactly it looks like. So we'll have a heat flux plate and at the same time record not just the temperature change, but also the heat flow. So as you can see on this graph, the beginning stage of the heating, uh, the material will, uh, the temperature of the, the polymer will increase and under a um, 
constant heat flow, but once the material starts to be cured, so as you can see on this line, this means the curing has started. Once curing starts, the heat flow will decrease as the chemi chemical reaction is taking place. And as you can see, after the uh, temperature increase and the conversion rate start to increase, and when the conversion is finished, the, part, the polymer is being fully cured, then our heat flow will get back to its stable state. And, and then the material will keep uh, being heated up but under a um, constant heat flow. So this, this range is the curing range. And with this curve, we will be able to obtain uh, curing kinetic for one uh, one heat heating rate. So go back to the previous previous page. You'll see with four different he, uh, heating rate, we will be able to obtain four different um, curing kinetic curves. And with four different curves, we'll be able to build the curing kinetic models. Now, from these four different curves, we'll, we can tell that actually faster the heating rate is, higher the heating rate is, curing will occur at a higher temperature. And also, the whole curing range, temperature range, will be wider. And if we heat up the polymer under a slower speed, the curing will start at a lower temperature and it will be finished also at a lower temperature and the whole range is actually smaller comparing to um, a fast heating rate so this is actually important for us to uh, to determine uh, the proper um, temperature for our polymer and also our mold mold base temperature so now that we know the curing kinetic, the next important thing is the viscosity, the reactive viscosity. We can use the MCR502 and to under the procedure ASTM D triple four zero, we we will test the polymer uh, with a nine separate measurement and pretty similar to um, curing kinetic we will run the measurement at um, four different heating heating rate, four, four different uh, thermal ramp rate under a certain uh, constant angular frequency. So what it looks like is we'll use a known amount of uh, EMC solid disk at a um, certain diameter. We'll place it in between two parallel plate of a rail meter and we'll fix the angular speed of the disk under a linear temperature increase so that the heating rate is the same it remains the same and we will record uh, the strain the temperature uh, versus time and then we'll get the four different a viscosity curve as you can see from here so four different curves from four different um, heating rate and with that we'll be able to build the whole viscosity model okay so that's that those are the important properties for filling stage and then when we go to the curing stage uh, we have to consider the the PVT so pretty much like a thermoplastic during the packing stage, the, the PVT curve basically dominant the, the whole process. Um, for curing stage, PVT for cu curing is one of the most important uh, property that we need to consider. So we'll use the PT6800 machine from UCAN. Uh, 
um, to measure the PVT. So very similar to uh, the way we measure PVT for thermoplastic. Polymer will be put in the chamber and, uh, th and the, the area of the chamber remains the same, only the height of the polymer will, will change. So under a constant pressure, the, we will keep a constant temperature change, so constant heating rate, and we record the height change. With the height change, we'll be able to know the volume, volume change, and with the volume change, uh, we will be able to know uh, the PVT curve under the certain pressure. So we just need to test it under several different pressure and we will be able to obtain the whole PVT model for the, mate for the material. And then during the cooling stage, uh, the thermal property becomes very important. So we'll be able to test the heat capacity and also the thermal conductivity. So for heat capacity, we also use DSC 8500 under the procedure ASTM E1269. So a already cured material will be heated up from 30 to 250 degrees Celsius with uh, also a constant uh, heating rate. And then we'll, we will record the whole um, heat flow. And by that, we'll be able to know the heat capacity, the heat that is actually absorbed by certain amount of material and get the heat capacity property. As for thermal conductivity, we use the RG25 under a procedure ASTM D5930. The polymer will be put in this chamber and with a line source probe, we'll, we'll insert it into the molten polymer and then apply a certain voltage to the probe and then record the whole temperature gradient as shown here. With the temp temperature gradient, uh, with the temperature range from room temperature to 350 degrees Celsius, we will be able to test, um, sorry, we'll be able to measure and obtain the thermal conductivity of the material. And with this uh, temperature range, actually we can handle basically uh, all of the uh, thermal set materials. And finally, after curing, uh, after the part has been uh, ejected, we, would, we will need to know the deformation of the part. And that is when the mechanical properties become very important. Not just the PVT, we have to know the mechanical properties. So we can test the mechanical property of thermal set material, including tensile modulus, Poisson ratio, shear modulus, and CLT, the coefficient of linear uh, thermal expansion. The way we test it is thermal uh, tensile modulus and Poisson ratio will be obtained by a tensile test. We will use the instrument machine with a tensile bar. Uh, we perform the tensile test, record the whole stress and strain curve. With the stress strain curve, we will know the tensile modulus and the Poisson ratio. As for thermal expansion, we use the TMA to uh, record to, to measure a already cured material, uh, measure its uh, thermal ex expansion under a certain uh, temperature difference. Once we get the tensile modulus and the CLT, we will be able to use these two values and calculate the shear modulus by this simple equation. So with all these uh, measurement uh, tests, we can obtain uh, all the necessary mat uh, material properties that are critical for a injection molding simulation.
So now that we know what material properties we need to use for simulation, and we know that we uh, we are capable of running a full material characterization, we can have a look at the thermal set injection molding simulation in Moldex 3D. <clears throat> okay, so Moldex 3D, we use a true 3D uh, mold filling analysis, so we can calculate the curing rate of the thermal set material, and we can predict the flow pattern, can predict uh, the cure, everything in the curing stage and also in the cooling and warpage. So with our simulation, we will be able to predict the potential weld line and air trap and all other surface defect uh, location. And during the curing stage, we can predict the conversion rate so users can can determine a proper um, curing time and based on that we'll calculate the injection pressure and if we're using transfer molding then the transfer pressure uh, can also be predicted so a lot of the information can be provided by our simulation and as you can see on the bottom right uh, this is our friendly user interface Moldex 3D Studio it's a ribbon style structure, so it's very similar to um, Microsoft Office. So actually, it's very easy for users to get familiar with our interface. And on the left, we have a tree structure, uh, very similar to uh, a lot of the CAD software. So users can easily manage the, the, all the calculation and easily manage the model, etc. And also, for, of course, our uh, simulation result has proven to be very accurate uh, based on a, a very large base of users with thousands, tens of thousands of simulation done every year. And it has proven that our simulation result has a very high accuracy. So in our pre-processing, we have a customized uh, material properties for users to 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 define it by themselves. In the next page, we'll go, we'll take a look uh, at the details, uh, and then we have an easy to use process wizard, as you can see on the bottom left. Users can easily set up the filling time, packing time, or or curing time, and also the pressure profile and the flow rate profile the temperature uh, for, for your polymer and for the mold base. And users can even use a machine interface so they can set up the whole process condition with the actual machine interface as in reality, no matter you're using Arberg machine or other brand, um, you can find the machines in our database and set up the process condition with the actual uh, machine interface. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the uh, friendly user-defined material uh, parameters. So, as I mentioned before, our own lab has the ability to test all the material properties, but if our users are able to test the material by themselves, or they are able to uh, get the material data from the material supplier, for example, um, then they can actually create a material, a user-defined material by themselves in the user bank, or they can send us the raw data and we will be able to create a, a customized material file for all our users. And so users can define their own material properties, including the viscosity models, the curing kinetics, the PVT curve, and others like the thermal and me mechanical properties. <clears throat> so in this, in, in in this these pages, I just want to tell, uh, show you that our pre-processing uh, tools are actually very friendly, user friendly, and it allows 
it gives our users a lot of space to to do a lot of um, um, customized uh, things and also our mesh meshing kernel is all true 3d and automatic so it's uh, that the whole pre-processing is very easy and fast as for the result after a full analysis users can look at the filling curing cooling and the deformation warp pitch so during the fill, uh, filling stage users can easily look at the filling pattern based on this melt from time animation you can tell the how the part the cavity is being filled by the polymer and whether there will there will be any short shot that occurred and with the accurate prediction of a filling pattern we can give users an accurate uh, prediction of possible weld line and air trap so the next page i would like to show you the weld line location so as in the uh, filling animation the melt front actually comes from here and the other side come from the right to the left and two melt from will meet with each other exactly in the middle on the bottom and this is where uh, you will have a visible weld line exactly in the middle so with the weld line prediction our users can tell whether there will be any visible weld line on the appearance that can be seen on the outside of the part and which is not that desirable for for all the customers and also not just the um, uh, the appearance problem also weld line can influence the mechanical strength so this is also uh, something important and we we can uh, actually export this result and and use it in the structural analysis to determine whether the mechanical strength is strong enough in the weld line location and then at the end of the filling region normally we'll have some possible air trap locations so we will mark it for the users so that means the users can be um, extra careful, cautious when they design the venting location. Probably they will need to put a uh, venting location uh, around the air trap region. So there won't be any uh, sure shot uh, for the actual shot, actual part. And then uh, one of the most important result for a thermal set material is the conversion the curing rate during the filling stage if we have a very high conversion rate if the part is uh, being filled at a very slow speed maybe we might have some higher um, curing conversion rate and that means we'll have a higher viscosity with a higher viscosity uh we'll have a higher injection pressure and sometimes in some very thin region we might even have sure shot if the viscosity is too high on the uh, uh for the curing stage on the other hand we will we will we would like to check whether the conversion rate is high enough if at the end of curing the conversion rate is still too low that means the part is simply not hardened enough so the with, without enough cross linking um, the part the, the mechanical strength won't be um, high enough and the part will not be ready for ejection so with a low conversion that means the users might need to increase their uh, curing time so this result helps users to to determine a proper curing time which can save uh, uh, a, lot, a lot of our um, production cycle time and which equals to our production cost okay and after ejection the most important thing is the deformation so Moldex 3D warpage calculation consider 
not just the thermal properties and the PVT of the material, also the mechanical properties all together and calculate the deformation of the part. And like I mentioned before, for thermal set, normally the volumetric shrinkage is smaller comparing to uh, thermoplastic. So sometimes it is difficult to tell whether the part is uh, shrinking evenly or actually there is any bending or even twisting. So in our result, as you can see on the animation, we can scale the warpage to 10 times or even 20, 30 times. So we can, like shown here, we scale the deformation 10 times so we can easily tell whether the part is shrinking evenly or, or it's actually shrinking with some bending happening. Okay. And then after the warpage uh, calculation, we can also export the deformed model and in STL file. So we can, we can use the deformed model in uh, structure, let's say structural analysis, or we can check whether the deformed model is suitable for, uh, is able to assemble with other assembly parts. Okay, so now that we know uh, most of the, let's say, key features of Moldex 3D results, I would like to show you one successful case from our user TYC Brother Industry. So this is their uh, one of their part with a problem uh, during production. It's a BMC reflector with a dimension shown here. And what's worth noticing is the thickness range from 2.5 millimeter to 14 millimeter. And that actually caused some problem in um, some region. So here is the region that they observe some problem, air trap. So as you, if we took a if we take a closer look, you can see there are some air trap on this surface and also on this corner and this edge. It's right on the surface. And even after electroplating, the electroplating layer cannot cover this um, air trap, so it is actually visible on the outside. So their first target. Uh, let's say minimum requirement is to move the air trap to other region so that there is no visible air trap on the appearance side. And if possible, they would like to achieve their final goal, which is to eliminate all the air trap so that there is no air trap at all in this part. But at least they expect to have a part with without any visible defects on the appearance side. So this is the, the material they used for simulation, a BMC material that is already included in our public uh, material database. Okay, so the initial results with their initial design and process if we take a closer look to this trouble point, as you can see um, from the melt front, actually the melt flow through the whole bottom region first and create a closed area over here. So we have a completely closed air trap in this region, which, make, which makes it almost, let's say, almost impossible for air to escape from this region um, if there is no venting over here, which can be very difficult to design. And also from the ISO contour, we can tell uh, here we have some possible weld line. So simply by this uh, melt front animation, we can tell we might have a lot of uh, surface defects in this small geometry, in this small region. And 
it is actually observed in the real part. And I would like to show you first the, the, the final results. After modification, they were able to change the melt front, the whole filling pattern, so that in this region, the melt doesn't cover the bottom part first and, and create any closed air trap on the top, but actually it flows from the right side to the left side. So as you can see from the animation, there's absolutely no closed air trap, no closed region that is created during this filling stage in this, in, in this geometry and which, allow, which allows the, all the air to be able to escape from this region. So here are the modification that uh, TYC ha has done. First, they modify their uh, runner design. They add one more gate on this side so that the melt can flow th from the right to the left side. And also, on the bottom of this small geometry on the, on the other side, um, originally, this is what it looks like. And they cut out this part and this part to make the thickness more even. So, uh, so as we can see uh, in the dimension page, the part dimension is actu actually ranged from 2.5 millimeter to 14 millimeter. So actually, in this small region, uh, originally there was uh, some uh, thickness difference, and with this modification, uh, the thickness becomes more more even, so that the melt will not uh, fill the bottom region first and create a, a closed closed loop on top. Once they change this uh, part thickness, the part will be able to flow through the whole region evenly from the right to left. So after the first modification, uh, they were with the part with the part thickness modification, already they are able to achieve their first target. There is if we look at the melt front, there is actually no uh, air trap region on top and the the melt actually meet on the bottom right side which means there will be no wheel line on top and no air trap on the top appearance side and after they change both the runner and the part design this is the final result they get and as you can see there will be absolutely no air trap on this small geometry after the modification. So then they do the tool uh, modification and this is the trial shot result. And as we mentioned before, with a, a low viscosity, flash can easily observed in a thermal set injection molding. And if we clo look close to this small geometry, the final part, there is absolutely no air trap on the on this small geometry, and the part uh, is successfully filled with a very good uh, surface quality. So TYC, they were able to solve their real life production issue by our Moldex 3D simulation. So now let's go to the summary for today. Moldex 3D is a true 3D simulation tool to analyze a thermal set injection molding process. And all the polymer like saturated polyester, PU, LSR, or simply just rubber and epoxy molding compounds, they can all be used in our simulation. And all the necessary material properties like curing kinetics, reactive viscosity, PVT, and other thermal and mechanical properties, they will be considered in the simulation. 
and our own lab has the ability to run a full material characterization for our users. And our accurate uh, simulation result can help our users to investigate all the potential um, defects during the filling and curing stage so they can optimize their part and runner design and also the process setting. And we are and we are also capable of simulating the part deformation, the fiber orientation, the multi-component process, and basically 90, 99% of the commonly seen issues in real-life injection molding. Okay, so this is the, our session for today, and thank you for your attention.